Hey guys, in today's video, we're understanding some of our wireless gear by going over what are bands, groups, and what are channels. Those are the main three things that we're gonna go over in this video. When I first started using wireless, I actually used groups completely wrong. So hopefully this video can help you out so you can understand how to use your wireless gear better. Timestamps will be down in the description down below if you do want to skip through if there's something specific that you're trying to know, but maybe watching the whole thing will give you some more information that you are not familiar with. So this is all going to apply to in-ear monitors, wireless microphones, wireless guitar systems, any you know wireless gear that you're going to be using as a musician, this will apply to that. For this, mostly I'm just going to show you with a microphone or a guitar system, but it does apply to in-ear monitors, so just keep that in mind. Also, last week I did a free giveaway for a free wireless in-ear monitor system. So at the end of this video, I'm going to be doing the drawing and see who's going to win this free wireless in-ear monitor system. So be sure to stick around for that. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so just really briefly about how wireless works, or not even how it works, works just like what it is. So instead of using a cable in order to send the signal wirelessly from like a wireless mic to the receiver, it does that over certain frequencies. So for example, 470.100 megahertz is a frequency that I can use to transmit from my wireless microphone or my wireless guitar system to the wireless receiver. And that's how they get the signal without having to have a cable in between. So 470.100 megahertz is an example of a frequency that that wireless system is transmitting on. Certain Sennheiser systems, that'll be the first frequency that pops up. When you get your new wireless system, you're excited to use it, you turn it on, and that is what it's set to, 470.100 megahertz. That's why I chose that as an example. But the problem is, you're a vocalist, and you buy the Sennheiser system, and then your guitar player buys the same wireless meant for guitar and turns it on, and they're both set to 470.100 megahertz, there's a problem because you both can't transmit on that same frequency. The radio waves will be confused of going, oh, which receiver do I need to go to? Can't tell you how many people I know just have a wireless, leave it on their default setting, don't know how to scan and wonder why they get issues with it. So know how to scan for sure, which I'm gonna go over in this video. So that's why it's important to have multiple options of different frequencies that you can transmit on so that you can find a clear channel or a clear frequency in order to make sure that you don't get dropouts and that your wireless gear works properly. There's different frequencies like 470.100 megahertz, like I mentioned, 506.500 megahertz, that's another one, 2.4 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz, 902 megahertz. You know, there's all sorts of different frequencies that they choose to transmit on. I'm not gonna really go over the differences between them. Just know that whatever the frequency that it transmits on, whether it's in megahertz or gigahertz, that's important to know because that is the radio band or radio frequency that your wireless uses to connect the transmitter to the receiver. Make sense? Okay, so one of the first things that you're gonna notice is bands. So different wireless have different bands. Not always, you know, some of the cheaper stuff, they just say our wireless is only in 2.4 gigahertz. And that's the only option that you have. Our wireless is only in 5.8 gigahertz and doesn't have different bands. But if you get something, you know, by Sure or Sennheiser or something like that, they will have different bands. Sennheiser will have A1 band and G1 band. I think it's G. I can't remember, but you know, have stuff like that. Sure will have like, you know, H55 and G58 and numbers like that. What it means, basically is each different band will have a different range of frequencies that the wireless will transmit on. So if you look, I just pulled up, you know, a Shure SLX system, which is what I use for my wireless microphone. This is a lavalier system. It'll apply to other wireless systems as well. So you can see, looking here, the G58 band you can see goes from 470 up to 514 megahertz. So using this system, it has all sorts of different frequencies that you can set it to so that you can find a clear channel, but it starts from 470 megahertz and goes all the way up to 514 megahertz. Every wireless is gonna have a limited range that you can find a frequency on. Looking over, you have H55 band, which goes from 514 up to 558 megahertz. And if you check out the J52 band, that goes from 558 up to 602 megahertz. So each of those bands will transmit in a different range of frequencies. Does that make sense? So you do want to find a system that has a large frequency range. It does depend on how many you want to use at once. So a wider number of frequencies that you have, the more wireless you can use at once. Um, but the band is basically just, here's the frequencies that are available for a wireless system. And your wireless will transmit somewhere in between that range 
of frequencies. Okay, so now that we understand bands, that bands represent the space of frequencies that are available to us, the channel is the specific channel the wireless transmits on. I'm gonna tie this into groups here in a minute, but let's look at this graph. Look at this graph. From a Sure video that explained this. And if you want to find out more about this, I'll post a link to this video down below. So we're gonna ignore the part about the groups for right now. Channel one transmits on 470.700 megahertz. Channel two transmits on 471.175, you know, all the way up to channel seven, which is 474. 0.700 megahertz. So those are just the different channels that they have chosen to transmit on. So what is the value in that? That's that's basically what channels are. It is the frequency that it transmits on. And you almost always can see what the frequency is, especially on Shure and Sennheiser stuff, which is mostly what I use. So that's channels, very short chapter. So if you guys are finding this content helpful, I do post videos about wireless and understanding wireless, wireless reviews and stuff like that. Um, so don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. And if you're finding the content helpful, hitting the thumbs up button is a free way to support the channel. So I would appreciate it. So now, what are the groups? The groups are the most important part that it applies to the channels. So if you look at this graph again, group one, channel one, transmits on 470.700 megahertz. Group two, channel one, transmits on 470.500 megahertz. So those, you know, those are pretty close numbers, but those are different numbers. The thing that I like about this graph is that it shows, you know, see the proper spacing between channels. For example, on this one in group one, channel three is on 472.150 megahertz, and channel four is on 472.650. 50 megahertz. So there is a 0.500 megahertz range in between those two. Now, this is where it's important is that Sure knows their products and they know that that is enough space between the frequencies that they're not going to interfere with each other. Group two, channel three is on 471.925 megahertz. And then channel four is on 472.775 megahertz. So a little bit more range than, you know, the 500 megahertz, but it says that that is enough space that they won't interfere with each other. But look at channel one on group one and group one on channel two. Those are only 0.200 megahertz away from each other. So they're saying that is not enough space. So, you know, you can't transmit on 470.100 and then 470.100 10, 470.120, 470.130. It does, I don't know of anything that goes in groups of 10 like that, but just as an example, you know, it doesn't just transmit on this tiny, tiny, tiny frequency. There's always a little bit of overlap on these wireless frequencies. So you don't want to have them too close to each other, right? You want to have them properly spaced out so that they do not interfere with each other. So that's what groups are meant to do. Groups are basically a collection of pre-programmed compatible channels with each other. So if you have five wireless and you have one set to group one, channel one, next one, group one, channel two, channel three, channel four, and channel five, they are spaced out far enough from each other that they're not going to get interference. However, as if you saw, you know, if you have one set to group one, channel one, and group to channel one, those two frequencies are right next to each other, but it will cause the wireless to work less efficiently when the frequencies are that close together. When I first started using groups, I was like, oh, well, let's set a mine to group one and you use you put yours on group two and then we'll put the other put the drummer on group three. It's not actually what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to see which group has the most available frequencies. I'm going to show you how to do that here in a minute. Say that group three has the most available frequencies. You set it to group three. You set one to channel one one to channel two and one to channel three. These channels have the best separation, so they're not going to interfere with each other. Does that make sense on the value of groups? Okay, so how do you find what is the best group that's available? So you can use, use software if you want, you know, that's far more advanced, but most products that have group and channel options have a way to scan. It's gonna have a way to scan for the best and clearest channel. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now using two of the main wireless systems that I use, one by Sennheiser and one by Shure. Okay, so every device is going to be different. I'm going to be demoing this on my Sennheiser system. I love the system. It's one of my favorite systems. It's my go-to wireless system. Check out my video on this. It's, it's such a great system. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do a scan right now. And the way you do that is you go to Easy Setup, 
scan a new list. Now what it's gonna do, it's gonna scan the environment for the best possible channel. Now mine, this system right here is very, has a very wide RF tuning bandwidth as you can see. It goes from 470 up to 558 megahertz. That's an awesome number of frequencies and most devices are gonna have less than that. But that's part of the reason why I got this system because it's very high end and there's so many frequencies that it can find. So actually while we're waiting for this thing to finish scanning, something to keep in mind is that every wireless device is a little bit different. So this one's actually going to scan for groups and channels. Unlike a Sure device or something like that, you can do a group scan or a channel scan. But this is doing, it's going to look for what group is going to have the most available channels. And what it found, and you can see there's a lot of free channels. So what it's going to say is that on, this one says bank, you know, group, uh, group and bank are the same thing in this case. But it says on group 17, it found 25 free channels. On group 16, it found 24. 15 only has 18, 14 only has 13, 13 has 22, and so on and so forth. Almost every device will say this one has the most groups available. So if I choose group 17, now I can start scrolling through them. 17, 1, 17, 2, 17, 3, 17, 4, 17, 5, and go on and scroll up through all 25. Now, on the Sennheiser system, it goes from 1 to 30 for the channels. So it says channel 1's good, 2's good, 3's good. Let's find one that is not good. Okay, so yeah, so you see here from 23, jumping up to 29. So it's saying that the channels 24 through 28 aren't good or there's interference on them or something like that. What I would do is this device I would set to 17.1. Group 17, channel one, which just happens to be 526. 0.200 megahertz. So that is the best one. Now on the next device that I would want to do, I would say I want to go to group 17 and let's switch it up to group 17 channel two. Now you'll notice that it only goes up by 0.400 megahertz. And again, Sennheiser, I mean, they know more about this than I do. So they're saying that that is a safe frequency to transmit on. If you want to be extra safe, you can go up to the next one, depending on how many devices you have. You know, I don't have 25 wireless going. For this one, let's say I just have three wireless going. So the first one I have set to 17.1. Next one I'm gonna to set to 17.5, which in this case is 529.200 megahertz. And then on my third device, I'm gonna to go to group 17, and I'm gonna to go to channel eight. You know, again, just space it out just a little bit more. And then that's on 532.900. So all of them are spaced out really efficiently and really well, according to what Sennheiser recommends. So like I said, every device is a little bit different. So this is my SLXD, which I use for my vocals. Amazing system. But the way that you do this one is you go to frequency setup, and it gives you the option of either just do a group scan or a channel scan, or I can manually set the channel. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a group scan. It does, this one also does give you a guided frequency setup, which is really nice. Uh, but I'm gonna do a group scan. I'm gonna start scan. It is scanning for the best group. It's gonna say what group has the most available channels right now. In group one, it has found 32 frequencies available. If I change it, group two has only 29. Group three has 30. Group four has 28, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna stick with group one, which what it found and I'm gonna do a sign. And there are ways to connect it so you can send multiple receivers, but then I would hit the sync button and sync my wireless to it. But as you can see here, now it's set to group one channel 20. That's the one that it said it found as the best one. But let's say channel 20 wasn't working. What I could do is I could go to, again, frequency setup, and I could just say channel scan. So I would like to, you know, stay on group one. Group one, it found the most channels. I don't wanna rescan for a group, so I'm just going to scan for the best channel. And again, it, it, it's saying that 20 is the best one, but you know, let's say that one is giving me trouble so I can switch it manually here. And you can see, I mean, this is just good to see anyway. So group one, channel one is 500.650 megahertz. Go up goes to 501. 350. Next one up goes to 504, 150. So I'm happy with that. I want to apply it. And now my channel is set to group one, channel 23, and I can sync that way. But most of the time when you initially set up, you want to do a group scan, find the best amount of groups, and then assign it to the different channels. So if I'm setting up three of these mics, I would set one to channel one, I would set the next one to say channel five and the next one to say channel 10 or something like that.
So hopefully that helps. And hopefully now you have an understanding of how to use groups when you're setting up your wireless systems. So does that make sense on what bands are, what groups are, and what channels are, and how to properly use those? The groups are your friend. That's a smart way to set up your wireless system. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys made it to the end of this video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button. It does take a while to put these videos together. I hate asking for likes, most YouTubers do, but it truly does help feed the YouTube algorithm, so I would appreciate it. I will post links down below on the wireless gear that I recommend and that I use. If you are looking into wireless gear, either vocals, guitar, bass, in your monitor, stuff like that. I will post my recommendations down below. I have also reviewed plenty of these products on my channel as well. So be sure to check out the videos, which will also be linked down below. Before I go, I'm gonna do the drawing for this free wireless in-ear monitor system, which I did a giveaway for in my video last week. So let's see who's going to win this in-ear monitor system. All right, let's see who's gonna win. Do not allow duplicates and don't include replies. Almost 100 comments on this one, very cool. All right, you are the winner for that wireless in-ear monitor system. So I'll reach out to you. And just in case, if for some reason you don't get a hold of me, I will pick a runner-up. So you are the runner-up. So I will be in touch with you. Guys, there's a bunch of scammers who have been commenting saying you won, you won, you won, or something like that. Any comments that look like this, especially with like this text or WhatsApp in the title of the name is 100% a scam. If anybody asks you to send money to them, it's 100% a scam. No question. But I'm never going to ask you for money. So please do not be scammed. But congratulations to the winners and thank you guys for entering. So that's basically it. If this did help you out, leave a comment below and what gave you the aha moment. Let me know what wireless gear you're using. I'm always interested in checking out new wireless gear. Check out some of my other videos by clicking the link on your screen now. I've reviewed so many in your monitors, wireless mics, wireless systems and stuff like that. So click some of the links on your screen now to check those out. Don't forget to follow me on my social media pages at Scott Yule Music on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.